In section 6.4, we're going to be still finding volume like we did in the previous section, but instead of using the disk washer method, we're going to be using the shell method. As a quick review, let's go ahead and look at the disk washer method. And remember, the washer method was just a special case of the disk method. So we have the disk washer method here. Now when we were talking about the disk washer method, it was based on the area like a disk, the area of a disk, and then we kept building these disks and finding the area of these disks to find the total volume when we rotated it. Also with the disk method, our rectangles were perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So my rectangles were perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And this will be an important distinguishing factor between the methods. Also, for the disk washer method, I had pi times the integral, because it's based on pi r squared, from a to b of cap r squared, which is your outer radius squared, minus your inner radius squared, which is your lowercase r dx. And this, of course, if I had rectangles that were touching the x-axis, or I had another form formula that went from pi from c to d, cap r squared minus lowercase r squared dy, if my rectangles would, would touch the y-axis if they were extended. So again, knowing the difference between the dx and dy is important, and we can't drop those types of notations. So that's a little bit of review over the disk washer, and we'll be working some dishwasher problems along with the shell method problems, just to show you that you do get the same solution. Usually one is a little more work and one is a little less work. And usually you can choose which method you'd rather use, but with some problems you cannot choose. Only one of these methods will work based on the function. Maybe the function cannot be rewritten of x in x in terms of y, so I have to be able to use vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles. With the shell method, instead of being based on area, like the disk washer was, this method is based on the circumference. Now instead of having perpendicular rectangles to the axis of rotation, I have parallel rectangles to the axis of rotation. And again, an important distinguishing factor here. Now because it's based on circumference, my formula for circumference is 2 pi r, and so I'm, that's going to be what I base this on as well. So my volume is based on 2 pi integral from a to b, radius, and I'll explain a little bit more about the radius, times the height of the rectangle, and in case of rectangles that if extended would touch the x-axis, I'd have a value of dx here. Now, when we're talking about these values, radius is the distance to the axis of rotation, and this is an important distinguishing factor. The radius, again, is the distance to the axis of rotation from the center of a rectangle. Now remember, what we do is we draw out a good rectangle, and then we assume that we're going to have an infinite number of them. So we kind of look at the generic distance from the axis of rotation from the center of a rectangle. I think the easiest way to go here is to realize that, of course, this can be rewritten in terms of dy if I have rectangles that are horizontal in orientation. And let's go ahead and just start working some problems. Our first example, and of course being able to curve sketch is going to be important here, I would like to look at the graph of x plus y equals 4, the graph of y equals x, and the graph of y equals 0. And what I would like to do is figure out what is the volume of the figure produced by these graphs if I rotate it around the x-axis. So first of all, curve sketch. Well, these are pretty easy graphs, all nice little lines. y equal x bisects the first and third quadrant, so here's the graph of y equal x. y equals zero, of course, is your x-axis, so here's y equals zero. Now I need x plus y equal four. Well, x plus y equal 4 is the same as y equal negative x plus 4. So that means my y-intercept is up here at 4. And then also, if I think about where it's going to cross down here on the x-axis, 
little cross at 4 here. So if I put a 4 in for x, I have a negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And if I put a 0 in for x, I get y equal 4. So it's going to cross here on the x-axis, here on the y-axis. Kind of had to curve that a little bit to hit it. Now the only region that is totally encompassed by all three of these graphs is this triangle at the bottom. This region right here is not bounded by y equals 0. And of course these two regions in these areas are not bounded at all. So what I want to do is I want to take this region right here and I want to rotate it about the x-axis. So I'm going to rotate it about this axis. And what will happen when I rotate it is it will produce a volume. This will produce a shape that will have a volume that's associated with it. Now up till this point I only knew how to use the disk washer method. For the disk washer method I would have to have two integrals because my upper curve changes at this point right here. And I'll need to figure out what that point is here eventually. It looks like it's two but we need to verify that because you know graphing my scale isn't all that accurate here. So we have a new method called the shell method and the shell method works pretty slick on this one because my rectangles are going to be horizontal to the axis of rotation. My axis of rotation is this line of y equals zero. Because my rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation, I have to look at the right minus the left curve which stays the same here. So the shell method should be a little bit easier method here because the right and left do not change for this particular rectangle. Now the shell method is based on circumference so I have two pi integral and it looks like it's pretty clear that my rectangles are going to sum from starting here at the origin and then go all the way up to whatever this number is right here. So I need to figure out what this point of intersection is. Again it looks like two but we need to make sure we know what that actually is. So to figure out what the point of intersection is is I can set these equal to zero. I have y equal x and y equal negative x plus four. So I have x equals negative x plus four. Add the x across, I have two x equal four or x equal two. And of course if x equal two, y equal two, so I have the ordered pair two, two there. I'm only interested in the y value though. One of the important things to note is right away I need to make sure I'm working in terms of dy. Now when I'm setting up my formula, I have 2 pi integral from 0 to 2. I need my radius, which is the distance of the axis of rotation to the center of the rectangle. Okay, and I need my height. Okay, so the radius is the first thing I want to look at here. Well, the distance from here to here is just going to be whatever my y value is. And so the distance is very commonly just x or just y, but it's not true all the time, especially when I have an axis of rotation that's not either the x or the y axis. So in this case you can see no matter which rectangle I draw here, the distance from the center of the rectangle to my axis of rotation is just whatever the distance of y is. The next thing I have here then is the height, or in this case the length of the rectangle. And to find the length of the rectangle I take my right curve minus my left curve. Now my right curve here, I have it drawn out to be y equal negative x plus four. But I can't put a negative x plus four in here because I need to have everything in terms of y. So let's go ahead and look at this x plus y equal four. Solving for x here, I get x equal four minus y. So that will be my right curve minus my left curve. And of course my left curve is pretty easy to work with. Y equal x or x equal y. And of course we have a dy here. So let's go ahead and go through and actually integrate. Okay, so combining like terms and rewriting this integral, I have the integral, uh, or sorry, two pi times the integral from zero to two of y times four is four y minus y minus y is minus 2y times y is minus 2y squared dy. So I have 4y squared over 2 minus 2y cubed over 3. Now I don't want to evaluate this quite yet. We want to find a common denominator, make our numbers a little bit smaller and a little bit easier to work with. So rewriting, uh, better not drop my 2 pi, should be out front here. So I have my 2 pi I think I could pull out another 2 and another y squared. So if I pull out a 2y squared, I'm left with a 2 minus 
y, and this is going to be uh, 2 over 2 minus y over 3. So I have 4 pi y squared out front. Uh, finding a common denominator here, 2 over 2 of course is 1 minus y over 3. 3 minus y all over 3 so I can pull the 3 out front. So it looks like I'm left with 4 pi over 3 y squared times 3 minus y. Now we want to evaluate this from y equals 0 to y equal 2. Pulling all my constants out front, I'm left with 2 squared times 3 minus 2. That's my upper, minus my lower, which would be 0 squared times 3 minus 0. Rewriting, 4 pi over 3. 2 squared is 4, 3 minus 2 is 1, and of course I have 0. I'm left with 4 pi over 3 times 4, which is 16 pi over 3. Now this is units cubed, because we have just found volume here. So that's using the shell method. The integration I'm not going to focus so much on. I really want you to be able to set up these problems efficiently. So getting these problems set up properly is a huge part of it. Because of course if you don't set it up correctly, no, ma no matter how much proper integration you do, you're going to get the incorrect answer. I'd like to do the exact same problem, except this time I'd like to use a disk washer method. Now if you notice on this particular graph, I'm touching my axis of rotation. So that makes this one a little bit easier because my inner my inner radius here is going to be zero. So when I'm setting up my disk method, I have to understand that at this point, and again, this is not two, my, my axis is not accurate here. This is actually the point two on my graph, x equal two. I'm going to have to set up two integrals because my upper curve on the left is different than my upper curve on the right. So to use the disk washer method, which is actually just the disk method because we don't have a hole in here because I'm touching my axis of rotation, I have to set up two separate integrals. Now with the disk method, remember I'm using perpendicular rectangles. Because I'm using perpendicular rectangles, I'm going to have dx's. Again, we can come and look up here. Perpendicular rectangles, dx's. Perpendicular rectangles to the axis of rotation is a dx. So when we set this up, I have two integrals. The first integral will go from 0 to 2, and remember, disk is based on area. So I have pi, and we're going to go from 0 to 2, of my outer radius squared. Okay, well that's my outer radius squared is just the curve y equal x, and this has to be in terms of dx, so I have to make sure my variable is in terms of x, minus my inner radius squared. And then I'm going to go from 2 to 4, need my pi out front, of my outer radius squared, which is going to be my curve 4 minus x, outer radius squared, minus my inner radius squared dx. So I have two integrals to work with here. Um, when you work with these integrals, for this one, you can see that the area is going to be symmetric. For this particular integral, we get 8 pi over 3, and you can go ahead and integrate it to verify this. For this integral, we get another 8 pi over 3, and then I add the two volumes together and I get 16 pi over 3 units cubed. So you can use either method for this one. I think the shell method was probably a little bit easier. But again, go through and verify the integration. Make sure that you get the solutions that we have here. But we want to focus more on setting up these problems. So again, being able to curve sketch is going to be a very important idea in order to effectively set up your areas in order to rotate to find volume. In this next example, I want to look at the graph of y equal x cubed, y equals 0, and x equal 2. Well, right away when I see y equal x cubed, I know we're going to have to blow up this graph a little bit and really focus in on that first quadrant, because y equal x cubed sometimes has a very small area contained near the origin. So I'm going to kind of over-exaggerate. Now remember, the rest of y equal x cubed comes down here. Now y equals 0 is the x-axis, and then of course I have x equal 2 as well. So here's x equal 2, and here's my y equals 0. So the area that I'm trying to find is right here, the shaded area, and I have to figure out, okay, I have to know where I'm going to rotate this about, 
in order to figure out what the volume is, because depending on where you rotate it, the volume will change. So let's go ahead and rotate this about, uh, let's do the x-axis. So for this one, let's go ahead and rotate this about the x-axis. And we might do the same shape and rotate it about another area as well. Let's make that look like a little bit better rotation symbol. So we want to rotate this about the x-axis. Now again, I'm going to focus on setting up the formulas, the integrands, and then you can verify what we get for solutions. So let's go ahead and look at the disk method first on this one. Now with the disk method, make sure you remember your rectangles are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. My axis of rotation is the x-axis, so my rectangles will be vertical rectangles in this case. They're always perpendicular, they're sometimes vertical or horizontal, and I need to worry about dx's in this case. The disk method uses area, pi r squared, so what I need to look at here then is pi out front. I'm going to be summing these rectangles from 0 to 2, my outer radius squared would be x cubed quantity squared. My inner radius squared is 0 squared because I'm touching my axis of rotation. Now this x cubed is this graph up here, because remember it's y equal x cubed. So this is my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared, and I get 128 pi over 7. Same exact graph, except let's go ahead and use the shell method now. Now with the shell method, remember, I'm parallel, that's not the number 11, that's the symbol for parallel, to the axis of rotation. So over here, when I start sketching in my rectangles, I can see that if I were to extend them out, I would have dy's. So I have horizontal rectangles, and because I'm using horizontal rectangles, I need to worry about dy here. So the shell method is based on circumference, so I have 2 pi r, and now I have to look at this pretty carefully. With parallel to the axis of rotation, I have horizontal rectangles. I'm going to be summing them from the origin up to whatever this point is right here. Well, that point will be plugging 2 in. If I plug in 2, I get 2 cubed, which is 8. So I'll be summing my rectangles from 0 to 8. Now from here, I need to figure out what the radius is. Now the radius is the distance from the center of a rectangle to the axis of rotation. Now what, no matter what rectangle I draw here, the distance is just a distance of y. And then I need the height of each of these rectangles, or in this particular case it's really not the height, it's the length. And the length is always going to be at the most 2, but then I have to subtract off this curve right here. Well that curve is y equal x cubed. But remember, everything here is in terms of dy, so I can't plug in x cubed in here. So I need to solve for x, and if I solve for x, I get y to the one-third dy. So setting this up, I get 2 pi, integral from 0 to 8 because I'm summing horizontal rectangles. The distance of my radius from the axis of rotation is a distance of r, and then the height, or in this particular case, the length of the rectangle is always 2 minus this inner curve, so it is right minus left, 2 minus y to the one-third. And remember, we have to rewrite x equal y to the one-third to get this to work out. Now, you will still get the same solution here, 128 pi over 7. Both of these are units cubed, and you can verify these, and I would spend some time going through and checking the integration. On the next one, I would like to do the exact same graph except instead of rotating about the x-axis, I would like to rotate it about the y-axis. Okay, now again, this is my picture, except this time I want to rotate it about the x-axis. And because we're rotating about the x-axis, I'm going to make sure we note that, I need to be able to set up two different methods if possible. Now when we have a simple function like y equal x cubed, I can solve this for x very simply by taking the cubic root of each side. So dx dy is not going to really matter here for this case. So I'm rotating this about the x-axis. Let's go ahead and look at the shell method here first this time. Now remember, shell, parallel, they rhyme. I'm going to be parallel to the axis of rotation. So my rectangles in this particular case will be vertical. Okay, now remember, I'm parallel to the axis of rotation. That's not the number 11. It's parallel to the axis of rotation. In this case, I'm going to have vertical rectangles, 
and because I have vertical rectangles I need to be working in terms of dx's so that means I'm going to use y equal x cubed in my right so volume is based on circumference for the shell method I'm going to be summing from 0 to 2 that information was given to me up here so 0 to 2 and for the shell method I need my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared well this is going to make just a huge big bowl kind of a wedge bowl with the thick on the outside and it will be bowl shaped on the inside it's almost like a mold for a bowl so here in this particular case I am touching or sorry I'm not touching my axis of rotation so I kinda of need to keep that in mind now with the shell method I need my radius times the height well the radius again is the distance from the center of a rectangle to the axis of rotation which in this case is a distance of x the height is easy it's just good old x cubed and of course I'm touching my axis of rotation if I extend these rectangles out and so I have my values for dx if you integrate this you get 64 pi over 5 units cubed and again go through and verify that now with the disk method remember I need perpendicular to the axis of rotation so for my disk method of course I'm not going to consider most of this but this will be in terms of dy so this will go from 0 to 8 it's based on circumference and I have horizontal rectangles and because I have some horizontal rectangles I'm working with okay for here for our disk method I am perpendicular to the axis of rotation so here I have my rectangle here I'm horizontal so I need to be working in terms of dy with the disk method remember this is based on area which is pi r squared I'm going to be summing these horizontal rectangles from 0 here at the origin to 8 the first thing I need to do is look at my outer radius squared and pretty clearly my outer radius squared is this distance of 2 so no matter what kind of rectangle I draw this distance of 2 will always be my outer radius and then what I need to do is kind of chop off this inner radius well that inner radius is the function y equal x cubed but because I'm using dy's I can't write it as y equal x cubed I needed to write it as y to the one-third and of course that's my inner radius squared now after we set this up and integrate it I will get the same solution 64 pi over 5 units cubed because I'm trying to find volume so again go through and verify that these are your solutions but being able to set them up is going to be very very important okay the last one we're going to look at is the exact same graphs again except this time we're going to rotate about a line instead of an axis so same graphs y equal x cubed uh, what else do we have y equals 0 and y equal 2 and in this case I want to rotate these around the line of let's say x equal 4 so this curve sketch I'm going to need to make a little bit more room on because we're going to have to go clear out to x equal 4 and remember here's the rest of x equal cube down er, y equal x cube down here here's x equal 2 and that's going to bound this area and then I'll have somewhere out here x equal 4 so I'm taking this area right here the shaded area and I'm rotating it about an axis well for this particular problem let's just go ahead and focus in on the shell method now remember with the shell method I'm parallel to the axis of rotation my axis of rotation is x equal 4 so my rectangles are going to be vertical and again that's not the number 11 that's parallel and so for here I know I'm going to be working in terms of dx now the shell method is based on circumference so I'll have 2 pi and I'm going to sum these rectangles from 0 to 2 and this is probably a common mistake to make these rectangles only sum from 0 to 2 they don't go clear out to 4 there's a big hole in this shape between 2 and 4 and then 4 and 6 because I'd rotate the same amount on either side so this is a shape with a big hole right through the middle of it so I'm only summing these rectangles from 0 my origin to the line x equal 2 because 
that's the only region where this area is bounded. Next I need, in terms of the shell method, the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of the rectangle. So this is one of those different ones. Well the difference, distance from this axis of rotation to the center of any rectangle that I draw over here will be always a distance of 4 minus x. The total distance from the origin to this point is 4, so if I wanted to figure out how far this distance was, I just need to realize that this distance is x and then subtract the x from 4. Next I need the height of the rectangle, which is easy in this case, is x cubed dx. Uh, setting this up and integrating it, you get 96 pi over 5 units cubed. And again, the setup is the tough part here, and I think this is probably the toughest part. The distance from the axis of rotation, so we'll always start from the axis of rotation to the center of the rectangle. Now the shell method was pretty straightforward, pretty easy on this one. The disk method, not so much. So let's go ahead and look at the disk method for this one. Now remember the disk method, we're perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Perpendicular to the axis of rotation in this particular case, if I were to extend this out, I'd be working with horizontal rectangles, and with horizontal rectangles I have everything in terms of y, so I have my dy here. Now for the disk method, it's based on um, area, so I have pi r squared here is kind of how I want to think. Now I'm going to be looking at this as the integral from 0 to 8, because these horizontal rectangles are going to go from 0 to 8, I believe this value was that we looked at from up above. And then I need my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared, and of course this is in terms of dy. The easiest piece here is this inner radius. What is this distance? What is this inner radius? Well, it's two units, so that's pretty easy. Now the tougher part here is what is my outer radius? Well, usually we look at this curve and we end up taking like right minus left, but that's if we were rotating it about the x-axis. What I need to think about here with this outer radius is I'm rotating this about the line x equal 4. So this outer radius is this piece right here, basically. So that's going to be a distance of 4 minus that curve, and that curve is y to the 1 -third in this particular case. So that's probably a lot harder here in this case. The shell method sets up very easily, the disk method not so much. So in this case, again, I have my outer radius squared, which is this length right here, because remember I'm rotating this about the x-axis, or sorry, x equal, the line x equal 4, minus my inner radius. Outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared. Now if you integrate this, you'll also go 96 pi over 5. So this is an example where one method is particularly easier than the other. Now we haven't run across any problems yet that says you have to use the shell method because of the way the function is written. I can't solve for it uh, in terms of another variable, but you'll run across some of those in your homework. So again, go through, verify all these integrals, verify your solutions, really practice on setting up these volume problems. Thank you.